So emotional intelligence, the definition of emotional intelligence is it is maintaining your emotions, it is regulating your emotions, it is channelizing your emotions. Not only that, but also the emotions of other people. You have to manage, you have to regret, you have to channelize the other people's emotions also. Then that is called emotional intelligence. Remember, the definition is very important. After definition, you can write that rationality plus emotions is equal to emotional intelligence, right? Now, trying to influence people towards greater objectives, organizations, goals, and public purpose. And I said, just like I have uh, repeated all those things that I said, Esprit Decops is the term that you can use, Esprit Decops. Team spirit will be improved. That is called Esprit Decops. You can use this and you can say that team spirit will be improved. The rest of the things are similar. Emotional intelligence, right? Self-awareness, motivation, empathy, social skills, self-regulation, right? If you are self-regulating, you'll be self-aware. If you are self-aware, you'll get motivated. If you are motivated, you'll show empathy, social skills. I'll come to this point later, but just remember this. Emotional intelligence is the ability to identify our own emotions and those of others, to self-motivate ourselves and know how to monitor our emotions and those of other people around us. I have repeated the definition. You can go with the same definition, right? Just remember this definition. You can by heart it if you want. Now see, these are the four things that are very important for emotional intelligence. One is you have to be aware of yourself and about the other person that is called society right first thing that you should know is you should be aware of yourself all the quotations that i have started with this class they are all about this self-awareness right and an examined life is unworthy living it is not uh, the mountains that we conquer that is more important than it is the uh, it is yourself that you have to conquer that is more important of edmund Hillary, right so self-awareness, so you have to recognize, you have to regulate. There are two components in emotional intelligence. One is at the self level, the one is at the other level, other person's level. Now here you have to understand both the two things. The first one is you have to recognize that emotions, you have to regulate that emotions. Recognize that emotions in the self, regulate that emotions in the self. Recognize the emotions in the others, regulate that in the others. These components form your emotional intelligence and these are the components of emotional intelligence. Right? There is In the syllabus it is there. Concepts and their utilities. We have seen utilities. Now I am discussing concepts or what are the contents in this. Now look at this. Self-awareness. That is you should know emotion, you should be emotionally self-aware and it should be accurate. You should be very accurately judging what are your exact emotions are once you are judging it you can get self-confidence okay this is my emotions now you have to regulate them all these emotions you have to regulate them that is called self-management when is self-awareness once you are aware you have to manage yourself i am getting emotions okay that is completely fine now how you manage right that is important Next, similarly, social awareness. You should know about the society. That is important. And then relationship management. Yes, other people are feeling that. Society is feeling that. Then I have to go with this management of that relationship. So the terms are similar. Self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, relationship management. Right? I will come to that. You are an administrator. How will you promote emotional intelligence for yourself and your organization? This was the question. Now look at this. Models of emotional intelligence. 
this is an question which i have not answered just i have written some components empathy self awareness embrace the differences to make a big difference at work reduce stressfulness again positiveness of emotions right models of emotional intelligence the first one is the ability model slavery and mayors have given this model sorry solvay solvay and mayors have given this model no need to remember the names the ability based model views emotions as useful sources of information now this model says emotional intelligence is very very useful because it helps us to make sense and navigate in the social environment so this is the importance of emotional intelligence if you are aware of the social uh, society then it we can navigate in the social environment very easily this is one advantage of emotional intelligence again now ability model this model proposes that individuals vary in their ability to process information of an emotion and in their ability to process their emotions hence it, individuals differ i might be differing in knowing my emotions and channelizing that you might be in a different position so this model says that emotional intelligence includes four types of abilities so if you want to inculcate the values of emotional intelligence promote emotional intelligence then there are four things first one is you have to perceive the emotions you have to understand the emotions then start using the emotions right perceive whatever emotions are there then understand them and then use them this is first this is second this is third and then manage them fourth so there are four abilities if you want to imagine emotional intelligence or control emotional intelligence then these are the four things perceive emotions understand them manage them and then use them how you can build emotional intelligence in others or how you can build emotional intelligence in yourself perceive right understand manage use right this is how you can develop this is as per ability model mixed model was introduced by dolly and coleman this is another model of inculcating emotional intelligence in others it focuses on emotional intelligence as a wide array of competencies and skills so he says that emotional intelligence contains a mixture of all the competencies it is a skill that is required so they derive leadership performance goldman gave this model in his paper what makes a leader while discussing what are the components of a leader he said that emotional intelligence in that he said that self awareness self regulation social skills empathy and motivation these are the things which are very important for a leader right he has to be aware he has to regulate he has to have that social skill social skill is knowing social awareness and having that regulation and empathy and motivation are important prepared he has prepared two measurements not important leave it here but you just remember this these are the components of emotional intelligence on one side this is how you can also cultivate emotions on the other side and you can also use this model right self awareness social awareness self management relationship management and this is the diagram that i have drawn right this is daniel goleman's concept self regulation self awareness motivation empathy and social skill now there is one more model called trait model t r a i t trait model petrites have proposed this not important to remember the names right now a constellation of emotions emotional self perception located at the lower levels of personality right he says that trait emotional intelligence quotient the test encompasses for 15 sub skills under four factors so what he says is emotional intelligence is first starts with the or the individual will be so that once the individual is well he can be self controlled right if you are feeling some uh, if you are suffering from some diseases how can you know your emotions the first thing is we will be very weak hence you cannot self control so emotionality is based on that and then social skills in the social skills you can go and apply that emotions what he see first the emotions of the persons in order to ensure that he has to be very well he has to be self controlled once it is done he will be emotionally controlling 
once emotions is controlled social aspects will be controlled right this is another aspect but remember this aspect which is more prominent whenever you are writing answers just go with this four five five models five concepts self awareness self regulation social skills empathy and tolerance so there is another model bigman and goldberg has given this again not important leave it okay so these are the things so what i discussed this is my first book when i was preparing i prepared this first time right and this is my second book from here but look here emotional intelligence what i said i started with person what are the importance of knowing the emotions of individual right at the individual level how emotions have to be perceived use the examples or use quotations that i said that is at the individual level then i discussed what is emotional intelligence emotional intelligence is rationality plus intelligence now i said what are the advantages of applying emotional intelligence and then i said what are the challenges then we discussed what are the components of emotional intelligence right i said remember four things self next social self awareness self regulation social awareness social regulation these are the four components and as per daniel goleman he has said five concepts right you remember them self regulation self awareness empathy and he has said two more right empathy motivation social skill social skill empathy and motivation so these are the things which was said by daniel gold right more or less if you are knowing this if you are using some quotations right then it is going to work now we are done with emotional intelligence now let me quickly go through something uh, if i have missed anything right application in administration and governance right so we have discussed all this you should cultivate the answer only in this way application is utility again how you are utilizing them what are the challenges in utilizing them what are the concepts right emotional intelligence applications in governance how you can apply that in governance questions are emotions are intelligent right can we emotionally be intelligent what is emotional intelligence what is the role it plays in personal and professional life is it different from the traditional measures of intelligence how is qi different from ei right can we measure ei can we develop it what is the relation between ethics and emotional intelligence now what is intelligence now if you even study up to this also it is okay this is some extension i for if i have missed anything i have uh, written in uh, another book next year right just like uh, we people study first year we study one book second year we study another book right so this is called diversion of the things i used to do this when i was preparing okay it is all about processing of information and application of knowledge it is all about processing of information and application of knowledge is called intelligence intelligence is application of knowledge very important right whatever knowledge that we gain that is applying if you are applying if you are processing that and if you are applying in the real life that is called intelligence right analytical ability this is analytical ability that is iq to solve the problem this is an intelligence right in the early 90s emotional intelligence was emerged to have a sense of social intelligence not only your social intelligence right? that is ability to know and process the information of society and how to apply that knowledge in the society is called social knowledge in working environment emotional intelligence was applied so i said daniel goldman's book emotional intelligence at work iq is important at interview level only i said this with the intelligence you can become an administrator but emotional intelligence makes you a best administrator is what requires after the growth or entry into that right iq is important at the entry level iq makes 
emotional intelligence, best administration, he can sustain in work. That is the thing. So how the emotional intelligence has developed over a period of time. In 1904, it was only intelligence factor, whereas as the time has moved by, by 90s, emotional intelligence of Goldman, they said that both are important. Now, four components in emotional intelligence. Why emotional intelligence spread when it was published by Daniel Goldman? Because Daniel Goldman tried to evaluate emotional intelligence by using some structures. And he said that it is possible to develop emotional intelligence since people went and bought this book. The moment the book was published, people are very interested because they wanted to study how emotions can be controlled. And that book has become very popular. Now, four components in emotional intelligence, I said, but the way of presentation here, I did different. One is at the level, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, social management, right? Now, at the level, interact with the self. Person has to interact with the self to create or to know about oneself. Then you can manage them. Next, at the individual level, you interact with others. Then you will have that social skill, what others is feeling. If you are not interacting with the first place, you will not be knowing what others are feeling, how external world is there. And then once you understand them, then you can respond to that and become a leader. This is the four components of emotional intelligence, right? Again, the same thing that I discussed earlier. And I said, justification of answers is very important. You have to justify those. Just again, entire page I have written here, emotional intelligence, four components. One is at the personal level, another at the, at the interpersonal level, right? Social awareness, social intelligence, leadership responding to it. So this is what I have written above. Now let's look at this. It is commonly accepted that don't promise when you are happy, don't answer when you are angry, and don't decide when you are sad. Don't promise when you are happy, don't answer when you are angry, don't decide when you are sad. What is the essence of this statement? What is the importance of this to a working servant, right? No, this is the question which was there. You can use the same question in writing the answers. Now, whenever you are writing an answer, the central idea is about emotional intelligence. First thing that you have to know if you look at these questions, this is about emotional intelligence. Here it is all about why you have to avoid extremes, emotions at higher level. These are all extremes, right? You are happy, you are angry, you are sad. Right? These are all extremes. So emotions at higher level is going to take away the rationality. That is the importance. That is why they say that don't do it. Right? Now there were a few more questions. So these are the questions that I have copied. Right? So from somewhere, don't promise when you are happy. Don't uh, answer when you are angry. Don't decide when you are sad. Because they are extreme emotions. And during these extreme emotions, rationality will not be there. As a result, you will lose your emotional intelligence and we will promise or we will make worse decisions at that point of time. Feeling is important than reasoning. Do you agree? Think on this. Feeling is important than reasoning. Passion is the slave to reason. Passion is a slave to reason. Right? What he is saying? Emotions, feelings, passions, they are extremes. If you are adding intelligence to that, then they are going to balance. So avoid extremes. Go for middle path. Right? Passion is one type of emotion. Right? It becomes a slave to reason because if you apply intelligence to that passion, then automatically your passion is going to sustain. My passion is to become UPSC civil servant. Then it has to be with emotions. With that, it has to go with emotion. Sorry, intelligence. Right? Then you will have that reasoning and then you will work your passion will be a slave to your reason and it makes the life to go balanced. So, emotions are like extremes. If you want to balance them, mix that intelligence to that so that it will come to the mean path or the middle path of Buddha. Right? So, this is what emotional intelligence is again. Emotional intelligence, again, the same thing. You can think on these lines also, but better remember that managing, controlling one's own emotions and the emotions of others. Emotional intelligence can be defined as knowing what feels good, what feels bad, 
on how to get from good and ba bad to good. That is what I said. The more formal definition refers to emotional awareness and emotional management skill, which provides the ability to balance emotions and reasons. So this is just about balancing emotions and reasons. It's called emotional intelligence. By the end of the day, it will maximize your happiness. Emotional intelligence is a type of social intelligence. I said in the Western world, you call it a social intelligence that involves the ability to monitor not only yours, but also the other's emotions. Emotional intelligence, when transformed into ability and skill in action, becomes emotional competency. So being aware of emotions is one thing. Having emotional intelligence is another thing. And then transforming it and using it in the practical life is the emotional competency. Now, once you have that emotional competency, it facilitates an individual to understand, manage, and handle oneself and others positively in various settings. Now, emotions are there. You are aware of that emotions. If you have competency in managing that emotions, then you are going to turn your negative emotions into positive emotions. You are going to turn the negative emotions of society into positive emotions. Right? That is called emotional competency. Hence, you have to reach to that stage. That is called gaining that emotional competency. But the drawback is we are not that amateurs because we are not psychologists to reach to this point. That is the drawback or the challenge. Right? That is what I discussed. So, emotional intelligence can be applied at this level. That is called emotional competency. But in order to gain that competency, you require more training. Right? So, this is important. Components of emotional intelligence, I said it is intrapersonal at the personal level and it is interpersonal. Interaction with the self and emotions and awareness. Interactions with others. Knowing about one's emotions is the first thing that you should know. Knowing about one's emotions. Same thing I have written. It is all about emotional awareness, recognition of how, how our emotions affect our performance. It is also about realizing the link between our feelings, what we think, what we do. I said, what we think, that is important first to understand. Then how we feel, cap model, right? Cognitive, affective and behavior. So this gives emotions first. So in order to understand that, first you have how you can control emotional intelligence. Our emotions is, it starts at the individual level, right? First it starts in the thoughts. You have to control your thoughts you have, then your emotions will be controlled, right? It is the link between your feelings. What do you think and what do you say? That is important. So control here, control here, so that you'll be knowing your emotions. Then you'll become emotionally aware. And second one is accurate self-assessment. It is knowing exactly what is your strength, what are your limitations, right? Like if you are setting goals for a day, don't set goals uh, for 48 hours because in a day you'll have only 24 hours, right? So that is the thing. Candid sense of a personal strength. Candid acceptance of personal strength and limits. A clear reason where we need to improve. So the second important thing is accurate self-assessment. One is you should know about your awareness. You should know what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. Then you can control your emotions. If you think that uh, if you look at the tears in other sides, then if you are uh, thinking that it is you are making or if tears in other sides are making you to be uh, very emotional, then you should know that, okay, this is my weakness. By looking at the tears, I am compromising, right? So if you know that, then you will be very strong. So self-assessment for what you are becoming weak for what you are becoming strong that you have to know so for example if someone is crying before us our emotions outplay our rationality this is your weakness so if someone is showing their uh, uh, someone is very showing their attitude then we might not like it right so this makes us angry so if you know that this is making me angry or this uh, component is making me angry, then this is weakness. You should be aware of your weakness. Then you can overcome your emotions. This is the point how you can convert your negative emotions into positive emotions. 
by being or by accurately judging what are your strengths what are your weaknesses then you can control your emotions not only for exam but even for in practical life also this is the best thing that you can do manage your emotions understand your emotions where you are falling for where you are standing for right if you are falling or if your emotions are taking away the rationality then that is called emotional weakness if you want to become emotionally strong you have to balance that first know what is your weakness first know what are your strengths then you can convert your weakness into strength right once you know that the second component is management of ethics the first component is at the self right i said this one at the interpersonal of level you have two things one is you have to know your emotions you have to for knowing yourself first thing is you should know what are your thoughts what are your behavior that is the first thing the second thing is you have to accurately self assess yourself right what are your strengths what are your weaknesses right these are the two things which are important once these two things are known you can manage yourself how you can manage your emotions by self control it is managing descriptive emotions and impulses effectively the self control is all about think clearly stay focused under pressure think very clearly and stay focused under pressure self control is all about stay calm positive even in tiring moments this is called self control this is how you manage your emotions be calm be relaxed be positive this is why positive attitude is very important because it carries that emotional intelligence even in tiring moments right next self control is one thing how you can manage your emotions adaptability to situations is another thing the ability to be very flexible to the changing times and challenges is called adaptability right you have to be flexible in changing or in challenging right in all the challenges you have to be very adaptable then you will control yourself then that gives you the so called managing emotions are you understanding i said there are four components right self awareness self regulation social awareness social regulation i am discussing what are there in self awareness what is there in self regulation what is there in social awareness what is there in social management self awareness there are two things one is knowing your emotions and accurately measuring your emotions second component is management of self emotions how you can manage the first one is by being self controlled how you can be self controlled by staying calm positive even during the times of testing the second thing is being very adaptable right the third thing is innovation that is being open to new ideas and alternative approaches that is being tolerant towards others views then you can self control yourself this is how you can do on the first two quarters that is self awareness and self regulation now you have to go at the manage second level that is called motivating oneself what motivates an individual is important right look at this motivate an individual by achievement drive achievement drive is striving to improve or meet the standards of excellence people with achievement drives are result oriented they set challenging goals they know how to improve their performance right how achievement drive works through commitment now what it is saying the first component is this management of emotions and then motivate oneself how you can motivate yourself by setting achievement drive yes i have to achieve this i have to achieve this irrespective of the conditions i have to achieve this then you can be self controlled by yourself right a person who is achievement driven he will be result oriented right he will be setting challenges challenging goals and he knows how to improve if you are not having any any motivation then we will be very poor you know we don't understand our emotions we don't understand our rationalities we don't understand our weaknesses then we will be just like a normal being but if you motivate yourself yes i have to achieve this then you will be self aware in each and everything that is how you can create awareness in yourself another thing is initiation and optimism these are the twin competencies that individual should have initiations and optimism they mobilize people to seize opportunities and allow them to tackle the setbacks 
and obstacles in strife right optimism is a positive thing you should have or you should carry that then only you can control your emotions example aruna rai 1968 ias officer she quits job goes to rajasthan starts rti movement if you know this aruna rai i have said that uh, in my thinkers administrators to look at aruna rai was there so aruna rai in 1968 she was an ias officer at a very young stage she quits her job goes to rajasthan you know she starts the movement for rti and she has started way back in 1990s and it is in 2005 rti act was enacted that is after almost 20 to 25 years living in an area where there is no electricity why she has achieved this because of this initiation and optimism this is how she has controlled herself or she has overcome all the problems rajender singh is called as waterman of india in the alwar area he wanted to revive traditional water harvest no money no support from locals now he implemented it irrespective of that he implemented it because he has that optimism he has that positive quantity mc mehta is known as green man of india right mc mehta case environment right to environment is a fundamental right fought for environment cause varghese kurian right the amul man right so this is the optimism this is at the intras personal level i said in the video edo cheptunnan anukokandi emotional intelligence is of two types at the intra personal level and another one is inter personal level at the intra personal level first thing which is very important is how to manage your emotions is self awareness right self awareness you can get it through these components knowing one's emotions this is first thing accurate self assessment knowing one's emotions accurate self emotions how you can know your emotions by looking at your thoughts affective and behavior right and then accurate self assessment you have to know what is your weakness what is your strength once you know that then you can control these things then the third one is component to management managing ethics management managing emotions in that management first you have to have self control the second thing is adaptability and innovation look at this i have written this as b component b component second component that is called management managing emotions right this is first component the second component is managing one's emotions in that the first component again is this one side heading is achieve managing emotions how you can manage through self control right self control how staying calm in all the situations or adaptability and innovation adaptability and innovation self control adaptability innovation this is how you can manage c is motivating oneself why motivating oneself always gives all these things right what they gives motivate you how you can motivate through achievement drive second one is through commitment through initiation and optimism these are the three things how you motivate so right motivating once you are motivating yourself you will be having that achievement drive have that achievement yes i have to be successful have that commitment have that optimism in life have that initiation so these are the things which play very crucial role in playing 
in self awareness right if you want to cultivate intra personal emotions inside a person if you want to cultivate these are the very important things not only for upsc but even for practical life also it is important right so these are the things at the intra personal level there is at the inter personal level also right one is social inter you understood this there are three components three components means you can create self awareness in this way yella see there will be some questions how you can develop emotional intelligence in one self these are the techniques to develop emotional intelligence in one self being self aware how you can be self aware knowing your emotions accurate self assessment managing one's own emotions and motivating one so these are the ways to develop intra personal emotions now we are going to the second aspect that is called inter personal emotions how you can have that the first one is you should know about social intelligence here you have self intelligence the second one is the same component is social intelligence what is social intelligence it is the ability to successfully build relationships and navigate social environment we need to be socially smart in the real world you have to be smart that is called social intelligence right you have to be socially intelligent that is you have to understand the others first thing is you have to understand others and then you can handle the relationship what exactly the other person is whether he is going to say you the truth or whether he is using his emotions that you have to know slowly if you develop this emotional intelligence then it leads to developing one thing called empathy there is one concept called foundational value empathy right empathy starts at this point having social intelligence having understanding of others so this is the root for empathy right now why civil servants need to be emotionally intelligent these days at present the country is facing caste and communal divide forward backward divide urban rural divide divisions based on class gender region etc the feelings of oneness has almost disappeared right this makes the bureaucrats work to be more complex the number of civil society institutions are increasing which acts as a watchdog number of civil society institutions the civil society institutions has increased to a lot of number today right they are acting as watchdogs social media like there are many watchdogs social media people's expectations has increased and it keeps extra pressure on the civil servants since they have to be very emotionally intelligent blanket use of transfer and posting from one place to other place is creating pressure and stress hence you should not you should be emotionally aware okay this is the thing which happens normally so if you are falling for or if you are succumbing to that pressure and stress then it is going to make your life havoc so you should know you should be very emotionally intelligent that these persons are using these modes like transfers and posting just to make the work done so if you are aware of that then you will be not going through this pressure and stress people have lost faith in bureaucracy unfortunately they think that the present bureaucracy has developed some undesirable features like loyalty personal loyalty dependent thinking hierarchical thinking to be responsiveness and sensitiveness in people's matters and aspirations present day needs to be effectively competent if you want to meet the expectations of people you have to be effectively competent or emotionally competent so this restores or this restores the lost faith in the public emotional intelligence restores the lost faith in the public